Here's a question for the quantum curious. Is the Planck length the ultimate boundary of the universe? The mere concept of this unimaginably tiny unit of measure might make your neural circuits spark. But let me walk you through this one to see if it really is the universe's true limit. Hi, I'm a physicist, and today we're digging deep, really deep, into the mysteries of quantum space-time. The Planck length is about 1.6 times 10 to the power of minus 35 meters, far, far smaller than the diameter of a proton, which is around 10 to the power of minus 15 meters. So why does it matter? From a physics standpoint, it's the scale where the known laws of physics break down. General relativity and quantum mechanics are two most successful frameworks for describing nature, collide like incompatible software when you zoom into the Planck scale. At these small distances, quantum fluctuations in space-time itself become so extreme that space-time can no longer be treated as continuous. Instead, theoretically, it's believed that space-time could be foamy or discrete at this level. Now let's talk about where this boundary comes from. The Planck length arises naturally from three physical constants, the speed of light, Newton's gravitational constant, and Planck's constant. By combining these three in the right mathematical cocktail, you derive the Planck length as a fundamental unit, nature's smallest ruler, so to speak. What's wild is, we can't even measure anything that small, not without building particle accelerators the size of galaxies. But if we could, we might find something profoundly alien to our current understanding of space and time. Take string theory, for example, a leading contender in the quest for a theory of everything. String theory suggests that the Planck length might represent the size of the strings that underlie all particles. In this framework, everything we think of as point-like particles, electrons, quarks, are actually vibrating strings with dimensions comparable to the Planck length. And, intriguingly, these strings might also hold the key to unifying gravity with quantum mechanics. Then there's loop quantum gravity, another approach to unifying physics. It proposes that space-time itself is quantized, like a digital image composed of individual pixels. Below the Planck length, space-time pixels, or quanta, would act as the smallest units of geometry. This idea implies that the very fabric of reality is granular and not smooth, with profound implications for understanding phenomena like black holes and the Big Bang. Now, let me throw a curveball at you. Could there be scales below the Planck length? Remember, just because the math suggests it's the boundary doesn't mean nature obeys our assumptions. Some theories, like those involving extra dimensions, speculate there could be physics happening beneath the Planck scale. However, testing this experimentally remains far beyond our current reach. And here's the million dollar question. Why is the Planck length a limit at all? Many physicists hypothesize that attempting to probe below this scale would collapse space-time into a black hole, obliterating any possibility of measurement. It's like nature has a built-in safety mechanism to prevent us from seeing too much. But whether this is just theoretical posturing or an indication of something deeper, well, that's one of the biggest mysteries in physics. To recap, the Planck length isn't just a fun fact for physics quizzes. It represents a profound frontier in our understanding of nature. It's where classical physics fails, where quantum mechanics reigns supreme, and where entirely new laws of reality might emerge. And while measurement or experimentation at this scale is currently impossible, studying it gives us a tantalizing peek into the quantum gravity era of the universe. If this kind of intellectual adventure excites you, subscribe to HyperFocus. Together, we'll explore more quantum realms, cosmic mysteries, and theoretical physics, with no watered-down science, just the good stuff for minds hungry for complexity.